Hello, and welcome to Design of Scalable and Low Complexity Phased Arrays with Professor Amir Mortazawi. My name is Rashonda Henderson, your host for this IEEE Microwave Theory and Techniques Society webcast, which is sponsored by MTTS. Before we start, I'll mention a few housekeeping items. First, this presentation will be archived. A recording should be posted approximately 24 hours after we finish the presentation. We will send all registrants an email when the archive webinar goes up so you can revisit it or share it with your colleagues. Second, we encourage questions. We will answer them after the talk, but you can submit them at any time during the discussion. Enter your question in the Q&A box in the webcast window, and don't forget to click Submit. Third, some words about the interface. You can enlarge slides by clicking on the rectangle at the top of right of the live slide window. You can also enter full screen mode if you desire. Refresh or reload the current web page if you encounter problems. With regards to audio, if you're listening over your computer speakers, you can adjust the media player volume. You may also need to adjust your system's master volume. The icons at the bottom of the webinar window include a resource list. Clicking that link will start the process to download copies of the slides to be presented today. Now let's introduce our speaker. Professor Amir Mortazawi received a PhD degree in electrical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin in 1990. He is currently a professor of electrical engineering with the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. His research interests include millimeter wave circuits, phased rays, power amplifiers, ferroelectric thin film based devices, and frequency agile microwave circuits. Professor Mortazawi was the editor in chief of the IEEE Transactions on Microwave Theory and Techniques from 2006 to 2010. He is a member of the uh, IEEE MTTS ADCOM. He served as associate editor for the IEEE Transactions on Antennas and Propagations from 1998 to 2001, IEEE Transactions on Microwave Theory and Techniques in 2005, and as the guest editor for the December 1995 Special Microwave Symposium issue on the IEEE Transactions on MTT. He is currently serving as a chair of the MTTS Distinguished Microwave Lecturer Program. Professor Mortazawi is a fellow of the IEEE. Now it's my pleasure to turn the virtual podium over to Professor Amir Mortazawi for Design of Scalable and Low Complexity Phased Arrays. Amir? Um, hello, everyone. Thanks, Roshanda, for the introduction. And it's a pleasure to uh, give this um, talk on designing <coughs> Um, low complexity phase arrays. Um, my aim here is to just introduce some ideas as to how uh, reduce the um, <clears throat> complexity of arrays. I have removed many of the figure, you know, graphs, mathematics involved, and if then audience get interested, they can take a look at some of the publications that we have. <clears throat> So with this, um, I should first acknowledge the work of students who have contributed, uh, Noyan Akbar, Daniel Ayayi, and Ali Tombak. Um, all of them now are um, in companies and uh, pursuing their career. Um, <clears throat> so with this, um, I should introduce first phase arrays. Um, phase array is a combination ensemble of number of antennas and by adjusting the amplitude and phase of the signal that's injected into each antenna element, one can um, <clears throat> change the radiation direction as well as the shape of the beam, radiated beam. Um, in, in the figure on the right, uh, you can see number of phase shifters used. In this case, um, we are not um, we are not um, <clears throat> talking about changing the amplitude of 
excitation, just the phase of excitation as, and on the left side, there is a formula which relates the um, angle of radiation respect to normal, the scan uh, angle of theta with respect to phi, which is the progressive phase a difference between the adjacent antennas. So by changing phi, one can then change theta, radiation direction. And of course, these are related to uh, the frequency of operation and the inter-element spacing. So as you note, in a typical phase array, uh, you need a single phase shifter per individual antenna element. Now, uh, phase areas have, of course, many applications. They have been used in defense military for many years, but because of the uh, advance of integrated circuits, phase arrays' cost have been significantly reduced, and so these days they are used in automotive radars uh, for advanced driver assist systems, in autonomous vehicles, and for communication applications. Um, phase arrays provide many advantages in communication systems. They alleviate multipass fading because they can direct the beam in desirable uh, direction. They mitigate co-channel interference. Uh, they reduce the required power level because you can um, <clears throat> direct the beam and at get, get advantage or take advantage of antenna um, gain uh, to focus the beam. And so, therefore, effective radiate power increases um, using the array. And you can also enhance signal-to-noise ratio. Uh, now, with uh, incoming 5G technologies and use of millimeter waves, people are getting more and more interested also in phase arrays, in um, communications, in handsets, and one need to design phase arrays that are simple and low cost uh, to, to use this in uh, small footprints. So what I'm going to be describing here is, again, some ideas as to how one could reduce the complexity of phase arrays. In general, um, conventional phase array architectures can be divided into two groups. One, uh, parallel fed phase arrays. Uh, in, on the right side, in green, you can see the feed network. In this case, a corporate feed network is used which equally divide the signal among antenna elements. But before the signal is injected to each antenna, you have number of phase shifters. Typically, of course, you have also amplifiers and power amplifiers. In this case, for simplicity, they have been uh, neglected. And <clears throat> by changing the progressive phase shift, using phase shifter, one can scan the beam. So in this case, you note know that uh, as the number of elements increases, you need to have more, a more complex feed network. Um, <clears throat> and length of the feed line increases, and design of that become complicated, and one need to cope with the loss of the feed line. Um, furthermore, you have a single phase shifter per antenna element. All these phase shifters must be controlled. So phase array in general is a complex architecture uh, not only involves electromagnetics, antennas, uh, coupling of antennas to each other, uh, active impedance, uh, but also lots of electronics and also the control of it, this electronics. And uh, so, so there, there are approaches to reduce the complexity of phase arrays and, to, and they are very desirable in order to reduce the cost. And the second group uh, of uh, that uh, phase array design is based on series fed topology, where signal input at one end then is divided uh, into multiple uh, branches using 
couplers. As the signal is injected from one end, uh, one needs to change the coupling uh, factor of the coupler so that uh, one could equalize the signal distribution among the array element. I'm talking about the second uh, graph on the right. Unfortunately, I don't have any control on um, the pointer. So, um, <clears throat> so um, in this case, by adjusting the uh, coupling factor, one can provide uh, the uh, required amplitude taper, either uh, excite antennas um, uniformly or provide the tapering to adjust the, um, to control the side lobes. And in this case, uh, also you can see uh, not, uh, well, the, the, the feed network is simplified, no longer have this corporate feed with long lines, uh, but at, uh, you do need to have a single phase shifter per antenna element. At the end, you have a termination so that any signal, the remaining signal that's not injected into antennas is absorbed. There is also a second type of <coughs> serried fed array that uh, phase shifters are incorporated along the feed line. And <coughs> in that case, the required uh, amount of phase shift needed to achieve certain scan angle decreases. So um, in series fed arrays, you reduce the complexity of feed network. At the same time, still you need large number of phase shifters. And um, series fed arrays also, uh, I must say, suffer from two issues. One is cumulative loss as you signal travels down the feed lines um, <clears throat> and also beam squint that is if the frequency of the input signal changes then the progressive phase shift along the signal feed line changes and so the antenna radiation direction the array radiation direction shifts and there are approaches to mitigate that, I must say. Um, so in general, uh, phase areas are, again, complex, requires large number of phase shifters, and for that reason, um, they need many components, and they are, in general, power-hungry, and require large die areas in case of integrated phase arrays. So, I would like to go over several approaches to reduce the complexity of phase arrays. The first one is based on um, what we call extended resonance technique. And in, in a nutshell, the approach uses a design which combines power dividing and phase shifting into one entity. So in previous cases, in conventional phase arrays, phase shifters and feed feed network are two separate um, entities. In this case, we would like to combine them to reduce the, again, uh, complexity of phase array. And a, um, an external resonance phase array architecture is shown in this figure. So it's based on a serially fed array. As one side on the left, we have input signal which is travels down the uh, path feed line and injected uh, to each antenna. And so the idea is how to control the phase progression along the feed line while maintaining the amplitude of excitation. So if we look at the figure on the bottom right, try to simplify the architecture structure. We have two antennas. Each of them provide radiation conductance G. So radiation resistance is R, and so G is 1 over R. So we assume antennas are resonant, uh, so they provide 
pure conductance. Then um, behind this um, susceptance of JB at each antenna. So we have uh, G plus JB is the admittance looking into the first antenna, antenna element on the uh, right side. And then we have an element X1, a reactance. It can be a piece of transmission line, or it can be inductor or capacitor, depends on what JB is. And the idea here is to transfer G plus JB, the admittance scene, to the right side through the element X1 to G minus JB. So we transfer admittance G plus JB to its conjugate value, G minus JB. Then we have a second element, again an antenna with radiation conductance G shunted with um, susceptance, well, admittance Y2, but this is pure imaginary susceptance, maybe JB1. So um, <clears throat> in this case, let's say for simplicity, assume that Y2 also susceptance is JB. And if, if that's the case, then um, <clears throat> G minus JB added to G plus JB at the node 2. Um, in this case, susceptances cancel each other. So inductive um, <clears throat> susceptance cancel capacitive susceptance. And looking into the uh, left, then at the input to the two element array, we see the pure resistance or pure conductance 2G. So it's interesting is to note that if we follow this procedure, then the magnitude of voltage V1 and V2 turn out to be equal. And only the two voltages V1 and V2 are different in phase, and the phase difference between the excitation of the two antennas can be calculated as tan minus 1 of 2BG over G squared minus B squared. That is, if we design an array, we progressively go through such structure, transfer admittance scene looking into the first antenna to its conjugate, add to the second antenna admittance, and transfer it to an conjugate, and repeat this, one can uh, achieve equal um, array amplitude excitation, but the phase of the excitation will progressively change depends on what JB is. And therefore, by controlling JB, for example, by using a varactor, one can then adjust the phase progression across the array element and therefore steer the beam. So in this case, rather than using a phase, a complete phase shifter for each antenna element, one, you, one can use a, essentially a tunable element, a varactor, to achieve beam steering. Now I must say, when, whenever you try to simplify the array, uh, there are compromises to, me, to be made. For example, the bandwidth can be reduced, or the, uh, the scan angle uh, is diminished. So to reduce this uh, structure to a practical um, circuit, um, we have <clears throat> used number of varactors, as you can see in this uh, view graph. Um, <clears throat> essentially, we needed um, number of tunable elements shown as L1, C1, in and a piece of line to adjust the, to fine tune the element values connected to each antenna element. And then series circuits, uh, series tunable inductors uh, 
connected in between antenna elements and to convert the tunable inductor to a tunable capacitor and remove the series element, we use inverters in between. Um, <clears throat> and so we have now this with dotted circles shown two uh, varactors per each antenna element, which can be adjusted to control the progressive phase shift among the uh, antennas in a phase array. So one can design this circuit that merely by adjusting capacitances, one could change the progressive phase shift without changing the amplitude of excitation along the array uh, length. So V1 up to Vn are equal to each other as values of varactor's capacitance changes. And as you note, uh, because these varactors are connected in all in one node, using maybe one or at most two control signals, one can adjust the scan angle in such a phase array. Now, one could optimize, increase the scan angle depends on the value of inductances used in this structure, the capacitance values, and the tunability uh, of varactors. And again, if you are interested, you can refer to our publications. I have removed this information so to just simplify the presentation. But it turned out that, for example, if you optimize these, you can achieve a maximum uh, phase shift between adjacent elements that approaches uh, to 280 degrees or so. So from um, 0 to 280 degrees of phase shift between adjacent elements. <coughs> And in order to increase the size of phase array, one could then cascade number of arrays, as shown, number of subarrays, and use amplifiers in between. So you have the first subarray in the picture that's shown uh, connected. The end signal, the last antenna, is removed, uh, and the end of the array is connected to an amplifier with gain of G, as there, then you recover your signal amplitude and inject it to the second subarray and third or subarray and so on. And so in that way, one can increase the um, size of the array. And to demonstrate the idea, we designed a 24 gigahertz modular external resonance phase array. In this case, we decided to <coughs> provide the um, phase shifting at IF stage. So uh, we ha as you note, uh, we have two in the figure. We have two chains. Uh, one is the top chain is LO signal distribution. And we use extended resonance power dividing to achieve signal distribution, in this case, phase of the signal distribution, that means LO phases uh, that are uh, injected into mixers are all the same, and amplitudes are maintained the same. But in IF signal distribution on the bottom side of the figure, then we use the design methodology that I described. and by adjusting the vector values, we can adjust the IF signal phase progression across the um, mixers. And by mixing then LO and IF, then we can upconvert the signal to carrier frequency. And an example of 
such a design is shown in this case on the left side you can see the IF stage which is at 2 gigahertz where actors that are used are 4 to 1 and in this case we get inter-element phase shift from 0 to 180 degrees <clears throat> then um, on the right side you see the LO distribution we use again extent resonance technique to divide power equally into number of mixers, but no phase shifting um, or, or phase tuning is achieved here. It's merely a power dividing network. The LO is at 22 gigahertz, so therefore uh, carrier frequency is going to be the sum of the two as 24 gigahertz. And so uh, <clears throat> a um, hybrid circuit that uses this design is shown here. There are uh, duroid circuits. On the left side, you can see the <clears throat> um, antenna element, patch antennas, and the LO signal distribution. On the right side, we have IF signal distribution, and these two circuits are placed back to back to um, and, and the IF as the note as are go through through via holes through holes um, transferred from the circuit on the right side to the one on the left as the two two roads are placed on top of each other and on the bottom you can see the <coughs> both measured and simulated array pattern and the amount of phase shifters that phase shift that we achieved allow us to uh, get a 60 degree of uh, <clears throat> well, plus minus 30 degrees of scan range so um, clearly uh, Given the amount of phase shift that we achieve, the uh, scan range is compromised. But for many applications, like in automotive applications or even for communications, you may not need arrays that could provide plus minus 90 degree uh, <clears throat> scan range. So by compromising the scan range one could significantly reduce the complexity of array. In this case, a, a single uh, control signal, essentially analog signal, adjusts the uh, scan range across a uh, scan angle for the array. So we'd like to now get into the second idea using a bidirectional series feed network reducing co complexity of array. So as um, mentioned previously, in uh, corporate feed network, uh, you need a single phase shifter per antenna element. And to achieve <coughs> um, certain amount of scan <coughs> range, you need to provide certain phase progression that was provided by this formula I'm referring, going back to graph 3, formula on the top left side. Then <clears throat> by using the uh, series feed arrays, um, although you still need to have single phase shifter for antenna element, but one can reduce the amount of phase shift needed in order to achieve the uh, certain scan angle. Now, by using a bidirectional phase array as shown on the figure, third figure in the bottom, one can reduce the amount of phase shift to one half what's required for a given 
scan angle. So this type of design uh, simplifies um, the design the requirement for phase shifter design. An example of such a circuit phase array is shown here. We have a, an input which is uh, controlled by sing, single pole double throw switch, so the input signal can be injected into phase array either t in the right left side or right side. And if we imagine that injects, inject, injected signal is traveling down the array feed from the left to the right. And we have number of uh, um, power, uh, well, couplers here. Uh, the coupling factors can be C here. Uh, coupling factor for the couplers are the same. So as signals travels from the left to the right, then it couples to the array and what what travels down the array on the right side, then what's left is terminated. So <clears throat> along the path of the signal transmission also we have a number of phase shifters. And by changing a phase shift, we can adjust the um, direction of radiation. So <clears throat> in this case, <clears throat> um, the power distribution across the array, and therefore the directivity of array, is a function of the coupling factor provided. Again, the, all these couplers have the same coupling factor. So if the coupling factor is small, then um, as signal travels from left to right, uh, antennas are excited um, less and less, and therefore, um, directivity is reduced. If coupling factor is small, more or less you can equally excite the antenna elements, but at the end you have some leftover signals which will, which will be directed to load and dissipated. Now I must say this is in low power side. Uh, you have, of course, buffers and PAs and so on to um, increase the signal amplitude before injecting them to antennas. So there is a compromise uh, whether uh, what directivity would like to achieve, what would be the coupling factor, depends on the number of elements and also the dissipation at the resistor at one end. So typically, for example, for an array with 15 elements, um, couplers with a coupling factor of 10 dB or so provide um, almost equal power division, 10 to 12 dB. And in that case, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> some 30-35% um, of the signal then arrives at the end is dissipated in the load. Now, as you switch uh, the direction, then the signal is injected from the right side towards the left, and therefore you can then scan the beam in other direction. So in this way, one can reduce the amount of phase shift required for each phase, um, phase shifter. So, um, <clears throat> So here I'll show um, how, how sick, and by the way, this, this array can be used for both transmit and receive. Um, I'm showing how the signal direction changed. And also, 
uh, they, one could design a very simple phase shifters uh, that play serially along the distribution line. In this case, we used two tunable capacitors and an inductor. So using, again, a, an external resonance type phase shifter, transferring admittance Y plus JB looking into the right to Y minus JB. And by adjusting B, one can change the phase shift. And as you note, depends on the type of reactors. In this case, 4 to 1 reactor, which had Q of 50, uh, and voltage, tuning voltage of 16 volt or so, one can achieve phase shifts of in order from 30 or minus 40 degrees to about uh, 140 degrees or so. We designed such an array um, as shown in Duroid on the right side. <clears throat> and also you can see the uh, measured radiation pattern uh, compared to simulation. Again, we can achieve the scan range of plus minus 30 degrees. So on when the switch is on the, uh, say, left side, we can get scan angle of 30 degrees and then switch um, to goes to right side and scan angle become minus 30 degrees. And so we double the scan angle given the amount of phase shift provided by very f simple phase shifter. And given that all the reactors are connected in shunt, we use a single control voltage, essentially, to adjust the scan range. Also, the um, <clears throat> return loss for the array is shown here versus frequency. And <clears throat> a third type of phase arrays that I would like to describe now uses more or less the same type of topology that is a uh, feed, feed serially fed array. Number of couplers are used. Again, in this case, we use 3 dB couplers. So coupling factors in this case is the same. And to achieve um, beam steering, we use a single phase shifter in one end of array. So the way that this array works is that the signal is injected from the left side, travels down the array, then um, more of the signal, given that the coupling factors are the same, more signal injected into antenna number one, and then less antenna number two, and so on. Whatever left is injected into phase shifter, which then reflected, so phase shifter provides impedance, which is pure imaginary. So it's a reflective type phase shifter. What's left is reflected, and in this case, then injected into antenna 4, but then the signal being small is amplified by amplifier A4, and then signal travels uh, to the uh, next coupler, and then amplified by amplifier A3 and A2 and A1. <clears throat> and so the signals then injected into power combiners uh, are going to have the same amplitude. That means the array can be designed. That means amplification factors can be designed such that, well, I should move to the next to better uh, explain what happens as signal travels from left to right. As you know, the first antenna receive um, more of the signal and then less and less. And then what's reflected back couples travels from right to left, couples into amplifiers, and amplifier gains are adjusted so that the um, signal 
distribution varies as shown in the bottom. Uh, you see fourth antenna, third antenna, and so on. And if you vectorially sum the signals injected into first antenna, as it travels from left to right and right to left, and, sec sec and subsequently second antenna, third antenna, fourth antenna, then you note that the signal amplitudes will be the same, only the phase progression across the array changes. And the phase progression change is a function of phase shifter phase. So using a single phase shifter, therefore, you can adjust the change of phase across the array and therefore beam steering, achieve beam steering. Now, um, you need to combine the two signals uh, in order to achieve this vector summation, um, beam steering. And for that, some power combiners are used. But because the signals have different phases and amplitudes, and if you use, for example, Wilkinson, then uh, the loss in the resistor in the Wilkinson going to change. And so to equalize the power distribution, then we use some VGAs at the output B1, B2, B3, B4. These are VGAs just to correct the signal amplitude, or if needed, uh, taper the signal across the array. So using a simple um, architecture, one can achieve uh, beam steering. And to cope with uh, <clears throat> beam squint, that is a change of beam direction as a function of frequency, uh, one can design a symmetric array as shown here. In this case, two phase shifters are used and a power divider to um, <clears throat> divide power between two similar arrays on the left and right side. In this case, as the frequency of the signal varies, then array uh, beam direction will remain the same, because on one side, pull the antenna beam to the left, on the other side to the right, and so the resultant is the uh, just constant the same direction of beam versus frequency. The beam width somewhat uh, changes, but that change is minimal and can be reduced depends on the design. And to demonstrate the idea, we designed the array at 2 gigahertz in this case. You see the circuit board again using hybrid techniques. So we have an input signal divided into two, uh, traveling to the left and right. And you see couplers that are used are branch line couplers. To reduce the sizes, there are these meandered lines are used, as you note. And then basic phase shifters, two phase shifters are used to the right and left, and the signals then uh, injected uh, into combiners, um, one side directly, the other is through some am amplifiers, and then uh, finally injected to the antennas. And on the left side, you can see the measured and simulated um, array factor. In this case, antennas were not connected to the ports, but we connected just network analyzer, measured the amplitude and phase, and therefore uh, determined the array factor for, for this phase array. And you see the measured and simulated result um, follow well, each other well. The side lobes are around, uh, well, minus 12 or minus 13 dB, except one, which is around minus 10. And that's consistent with side lobe that should be achieved using a uniformly excited uh, <clears throat> array. The scan angle, as you can see, is, is plus minus uh, 15 degrees, about minus plus minus 15 or so, so 30 degrees. And ultimately, uh, would like to introduce a, uh, another phase array that reduces the number of phase shifters used 
in the area of architecture significantly, and that's based on this phase vector summation approach which built into feed network. And the idea is shown here on the right-hand side. So we have an input signal, uh, goes serially feeding an array. Um, <clears throat> um, the signal is divided into two. Signal A just injected into this serial feed on the bottom. Signal B is the one that goes through a phase shifter, which provides phase shift V. So <clears throat> signal B again is divided across a number of elements. Now, signal amplitude A1, A2 up to AN, and B1 up to BN change gradually across the feed network, such that the vector summation of a1 and B1 and A2 and B2 and so on give result in uh, output signals E1 up to En, which have the same amplitude but have a progressive phase shift dictated by phi. So um, one can determine the scan angle as a function of phi in such array and also the amplitude of signals depend on the, uh, of course, phi and the phase shift, and also the in individual amplitudes, AI and BIs. Thus, just to show the idea better, um, we have this signal uh, from the bottom shown in blue uh, and top in red. And so signal division take place in bottom where amplitude A1 is larger than A2, up, larger than up ultimately AN, and shown vectorially in blue again in uh, first antenna, second antenna, third and fourth in the bottom um, <clears throat> picture. Then the signal on the top um, feed shown in red, and in the picture you can see the amplitude of signal distribution on the top. And so then the vector sum is shown. Um, vector sum amplitude would be the same across the array, but the phase changes progressively. And there are multiple ways, of course, to make such arrays. And a particular way of making such a circuit is shown here. We have input signal divided into two paths. One goes through an amplifier, one goes through a phase shifter. The signal that goes through phase shifter goes through an n-way divider. So this is uh, one to n divider where output signals B1, B2 up to Bn have the same amplitude. So it's equal amplitude divider. The portion of signal that amplified A1 goes through a VGA, and <clears throat> portion of that injected in an antenna. Another portion through a divider is amplified, and then combined with signal B2, goes through another VGA, partially goes to the antenna. Another section generates E2, amplified by amplifier A3, and combined with signal BN1, and so on. So this chain of combining and dividing continues throughout the array. And of course, one needs to design this circuit to achieve the <clears throat> largest possible um, phase shift at the same time provide equal amplitude excitation. <clears throat> to cope again with beam squint, one can make a symmetric array. In this case, we show an eight element array. So there are on the right side and left side, we have uh, two four element arrays. And the entire array phase shift is controlled using two phase shifters. And there are, of course, number of VGAs involved, 
but designing VGA is much simpler than designing phase shifter. And also VGAs occupy much less space as compared to phase shifter. An example of a phase array uh, at expand is shown here again, used a hybrid circuit to design it. <clears throat> And uh, lastly, simulated and measured array factor is shown for such a phase array, scan angle, scan range uh, <clears throat> uh, is about 40 degrees or so, so plus minus uh, 20 degrees. Frequency operation is 12.4 to 12.8 gigahertz in this case. Um, <clears throat> and beam squint is plus minus one degrees within this frequency of operation. Of course, it depends on the design requirements. One can op optimize the array, for example, for minimize minimum beam squint or increased phase angle, etc. And to increase the size of arrays, again, one could um, connect number of them either using uh, corporate feed network, as shown on the top, or serial feed on the bottom. Again, such uh, arrays significantly reduce the number of phase shifters requirement. At the same time, uh, I must say that there are compromises to be made. For example, um, the scan angle scan range reduces, but uh, as I mentioned, for many of commercial applications today, one may not need scan ranges of, uh, you know, plus minus 90 degrees for, say, automotive radars, long range. You only need scan ranges of, you know, 10, 10 to 15 degrees. That's, that's all is needed. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk, just showed uh, several different architectures that allow phase array complexity to be reduced and array to be controlled using minimal number of control lines and small number of phase shifters. Uh, phase shifters, of course, that are used um, here were all analog, but what can use digital phase shifters as well. And that's, that's all, and thank you for your patience. Thank you, Amir. Very good presentation. Now it's time for our question and answer session. Before we start, remember that you can still submit questions through the Q&A panel. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, one of the most recent questions. It um, says, I wonder how well this method works statistically. Uh, the methodology assumes same power splitting ratio. Uh, what happens when you include non-equal insertion loss across the dividers? Well, you know, um, one can, of course, you know, like any circuit design, we, we have done, by the way, statistically, we, we did some Monte Carlo simulations in order to determine how variation of uh, coupling factors and losses change the behavior, performance of array. But this all can be coped with. This is, of course, part of a design, but as you implement this thing in an integrated format, of course, you can minimize then the variation of um, these factors uh, within the circuit. But yes, of course, one needs to have that in mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question is, does the use of the varactors limit the TX power allowed? Uh, these are all can be done in um, low power, essentially, and in, so one can use power amplifiers um, before injecting the signal to the antenna. So this array is, I don't think that they limit the transmit power level. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. One question is, any sensitivity in air analysis? I, uh, I guess you've answered that uh, in the previous question. 
right? That, that the question was any sensitivity in error analysis. Yeah, that yes. Uh, my, my suggestion is that please refer, uh, so I've provided students' name and dissertations are available online, so that should describe better um, and the number of papers that we have published in the area. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, this is in reference to slide 16. Um, the, the question is the direction, should it be different? Should the switches be in the transmission mode and not the receiving mode? So, so in this case, I showed uh, the case of um, case of uh, you know transmit case, but for receiving the same same story. Um, uh, here, of course, we use perhaps two two arrays for transmit or receive, but um, sh should should be the same. Okay. Okay, and um, let's see one other that was asked earlier, if you did not address it, uh, would you be willing to discuss the purpose of the quarter wave transformers at the inputs? So this is refers to, oh, this is a very first one. I, if I, is that what we are talking about? Yes. Yes. So in fact, um, imagine that you cancel out all the reactive, reactive elements. What you are left is uh, antenna radiation resistances, Rs, or, you know, Gs, 1 over Rs, all in shunt, and then the quarter wave transformer is used to match that to, say, 50 ohm. Okay. Okay, and then I'll, take, I'll do this one last one. Is what about the M by N array, uh, if it's rectangular or square? You, you, you can... We have actually thought about designing two-dimensional arrays, and one can use this also in both X and Y direction. It is possible to design even even distribute this. Of course, one can try to choose simpler way of distributing power, for example, uh, using um, corporate feed in one direction and then serial feed in other, but you can use the same approaches and make to the arrays as well. Okay. okay, thank you. So um, I don't see, let's see, any other questions. So um, I'm going to uh, start the wrap-up now. So folks, we're out of time. We only have two minutes left. Um, but we do have a couple of, let's see, actually one question just came in. Uh, Says with the vector summation based phased array architecture, why does one signal why does one signal amplitude increase while the other decreases? Uh, because because we need to change the vector direction, and so by adjusting the amplitude of signal, we change the angle of vector sum. Okay. And then, uh, can these architectures be used for multi-beam arrays that might be used for communicating different message signals to multiple users? Hmm. No, I, I, I'm, I don't think so. If you want to have a multi-beam array, then, uh, well, I have not thought about it, but uh, on, unless you make the, 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 the feed network more complex, um, you know, uh, typically people use what Butler matrices or Rotman lens and um, to, 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 to create multi-beam arrays. Um, <clears throat> you, if, if you are trying to design multi-beam and if you are trying to also control the beam direction, no, I don't think so. Okay, okay, so we're definitely out of time now. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Okay, Amir, I'm going to take the ball real quick. Yes, and also, uh, please, the audience can, could, could uh, feel free to email me if they have any questions. I try my best to answer them. Right. For attendees who would like to receive PDH credits, please follow the link. 
in the webcast view and use the code provided on the last slide of this presentation. We'd like to thank Professor Mardazawi for this excellent and informative presentation. Special thanks to our audience for joining today. We hope you found today's event valuable and that you will return for future IEEE MTTS webcasts. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.